Since a lot of you guys ask for it, today I bring you a flying AI tutorial, which has a patrolling system and following the player system. So let's get started. First on the content browser, we're going to create a new folder, which I'm going to call AI, open it and right click this folder. Then we're going to create a blueprint class of type character, which I'm going to name BP flying AI. And let's open it. So first we're going to set up the mesh. We're going to set the C location on minus 90 and also the C rotation on minus 90. Then we're going to select the character movement component. And on the details tab, we're going to search for orient rotation to movement. And we just set it to true. On the details tab, we're going to search for fly. We're going to check this can fly boolean. And the break in this acceleration flying, I'm going to crank it up all the way to 6000. And the max fly speed to 750. Then we're going to go to the components tab and add the AI perception component. Then we're going to select this component. And on the details tab, under census configuration, we're going to hit this add element button. Now let me go over on the configuration of the AI side. So the side radius means how far the AI can see, which right now it's set on 3000. That's a pretty good value. Then the loose side radius means that whenever they already saw you, how far you have to get from them in order for them to lose you, which also the default value is pretty good. So we can just leave it at that. The peripheral vision half angle. So right now their, so right now their vision is like a cone, kind of like this. So basically, if you're too next to it, they're not going to see you. But if we crank it up all the way to 180, they're going to be able to see from this line all the way to the front, which means that you can only sneak on them on the back. So let's leave it on 180. Then we're going to check all these boxes. We want to make sure that he detects everything, his neutrals, his enemies, his allies, everything. And the max age basically means how many seconds it has to happen after they lose sight of you for them to lose you. If it's on zero, they're never going to stop chasing you. So let's put it on two. Now let's compile and start the programming. Let's open the event graph and delete everything but the event begin play. Here we're going to call the function set timer by event. The time is going to be 0.1 and we're going to check the looping option and then we're going to get the event and search for a custom event and we're going to call it detect player. Here we're going to drag the AI perception and connect it to a function get known perceive actors. The out actors we're going to connect it to a for each loop. Then we connect the execution to the detect player. Then the loop body, we're going to connect it to a branch. And then we're going to get the array element and connect it to the function actor has tag. The tag is going to be player. So you got to make sure that your player has this tag. Then return value, we're going to connect it to the condition. Then if this condition is true, we're going to get the array element and we're going to promote it to a variable, which we're going to call target and connect the set to a true. So once the for each loop is done, we're going to go back to the set timer by event and add another set timer by event. But this one, we're going to leave it on zero and no looping time. And then the event, we're going to connect it to a custom event, which I'm going to call move to. Then we get the target variable of type get, right click it and convert to validate get. Now the input, we're going to connect it to the move to. And here's where there's a breaking point for the video. If you just want the AI to be able to chase the player, go ahead and skip all the way to the next chapter. But if you want the AI to be able to roam in the air, then watch this chapter. We're going to connect the is not valid to a line trace for objects. And we're going to need a couple stuff. First, the function get actor location, then get actor forward vector, then get actor right vector, then get actor up vector, then the function random integer in range. And this one, we're going to modify it for the minimum to be minus one and for the maximum to be one. And then we're going to copy and paste it two more times. All this is needed to calculate the random location in the air. So first the get actor location, the return value goes to the start. Then we're going to make some space, get the return value from the actor forward vector, and you're going to multiply it by the first random integer in range. And then we can just copy and paste the multiply two more times and connect each return value to its own. And then each random integer to each multiplication. We have three different ones, so we don't get the same value for all of them and add more randomness to the location. And then we're going to get the first return value and get the function add. We're going to add another pin and then add the right vector return value and the up vector return value. Then the return value from this addition, we're going to multiply it. Then we get the function random float in range. The minimum is going to be 2000 and the maximum 6000. Then the return value into the multiplication and then the multiplication pin into the end. Then for the object types, we're going to make an array and search for the word static and world dynamic. After the line trace for objects, we're going to connect it to a branch and the out hit to a break hit result. Then let's get the impact point and promote it to a variable, which we're going to call location. Then the location we're going to connect it to a true of the branch and then disconnect the value from the location. 
we're going to get the impact point from the break hit result and connect it to a select. Let's get the wildcard and connect it to the return value of the line trace for objects. And actually, the impact point is going to be the true. And we're going to scroll all the way down, get the trace end to the false, and then the return value to the location. And then to prevent a bug that I found on my testing time, we're going to get the location and connect it to a function called distance. Then the vector 2 is going to be the impact point. We're going to get the return value and connect it to a greater than 1,000. Then the return boolean into the conditional. And then if the result is false, we're going to connect it all the way back to the line trace for objects. Let's make some reroute nodes so we can actually see what's happening. So here we're just making a loop, kind of like a safe pin to make sure that the distance is worth traveling. Or if it gets trapped in between walls, it can actually find its way out. That's why we're doing this little loop. Now, after the set location, we're going to bring another set timer by event. The time is going to be something really short, like 0 0.01. And also the looping option is going to be checked. Then the event is going to go into a custom event. And I'm going to call it a fly to random location. Then we're going to bring the target variable and also convert it to a validated get and connect it to a fly to random location. We're going to be back with this one, but let's continue with the is not valid. Now we're going to bring a sphere trace for objects. We're going to get the location variable and connect it to the start and to the end. Then the radius is going to be 100. For the object types, we're going to make an array. And the value that it's going to be looking for, it's a pawn. Now we're going to get the out hit and break the hit result. Then we get the execution node and bring the function add movement input. Now for the world direction, we're going to call the function get actor location and connect it to the function find look at rotation. And the target is going to be the location. Then we're going to split the struct pin and we're going to get the Y and make a rotator. Make sure that it's connected the Y with the Y and the Z with the Z. Then we're going to get the forward vector. Also split the struct pin and connect the Y with the Y and the Z with the Z. Then the return value is going to be the world direction. Now from the hit result, we're going to get the hit actor and connect it to a function actor has tag. The tag is going to be enemy. So this is a safe point to check that the AI reached the location. Now we get a branch, connect the return value from the sphere trace for objects, connect the execution node to the add movement input. And then if that's true, get another branch. And now here is where we connect the actor has tag. And now before I forget, let's select the BP flying AI. On the details tab, let's search for tag. And here on the tags, let's just write enemy. It has to be the same name as here. If you miss a capital letter or a lowercase, it's not going to work. And now if all of this is true, we're going to look for the function clear and invalidate timer by handle. And the handle, it's going to be the set timer by event for fly to random location. Then after the clear and invalidate timer by handle, let's bring a retrievable delay. And this is going to handle how long do you want the AI to stay in that place before looking to another place to roam. So I'm going to set it to something like three seconds. And then the completer has to go all the way back to the event begin play and into the set timer by event of the move to. Also, before I forget this return value, we're going to clear and invalidate every time it happens. And also, before I forget, we're going to call the function set movement mode and we're going to do it on flying. This is just to make sure that the character is flying when we start the simulation and something else before I forget. So after all the pings are connected, just set this ignore self to false because we want the AI to be detected by this sphere. OK, now if we compile, go back to the third person map and hit simulate, it's going to try to find somewhere to roam. We wait three seconds and then it starts going somewhere else. And that's everything for the roaming. Now let's go ahead and start moving to the player, which is actually easier than it seems. So let's get the is valid, drag it all the way up and connect it to a set timer by event. Time is going to be something really small like 0 0.01 with the looping option. Then the event is going to be a custom event, which I'm going to call flight to player. We're going to connect the flight to player to a sphere trace for objects, then get the function get actor location, and the return value is going to be the start. Then get the actor forward vector, then bring a multiply node, connect the return value from the get actor forward, then right click the second pin to a float and do it something like 100. So in this part of the video, I messed it up. It was supposed to also add the get actor location into the multiplication of the get actor forward vector. And then the result is going to be the end. Then the radius, let's do something like 100. And for the object ties, we're going to make an array. And the value is going to be pawn. After the sphere trace for objects, we're going to call a branch and check if the return value is true. Then also get the out hit and connect the out hit to a break hit result. Get the hit actor value. Connect it to actor has tag. The tag is going to be player. So make sure to have this tag on the player. Then we're going to get a branch. The true from the first branch is going to go into this branch. And the return value is going to be the conditional. 
And then if this is true, in this case, I'm just going to print a string that says attack. But here you could add something like the attack montage. But this is depending on the type of game that you're trying to make. After the print string, we're going to clear and invalidate the timer by handle. The handle, it's going to be this set timer by event, the flight player. Then from the clear and invalidate timer by handle, we're going to bring another retrievable delay. This one probably around one second. And then once it's completed, we can bring it all the way to the event begin play and the set timer by event again. So this basically is a giant loop, but that's only if it reaches a player. If it hasn't reached the player, which would be the false from the return value of the sphere trace for objects, we're going to add a movement input, which we are also going to connect from the false of the other conditional, just to make sure and prevent any future bugs. Now here we call the get actor location. We can copy and paste this function, then get the target variable and connect the target output into the input of the get actor location. The first get actor location, we're going to connect it to a function find look at rotation. Then the target is going to be the second get actor location. We're going to split the struct pin and then get the forward vector. Also split the struct pin, connect the pitch with the pitch and the yaw with the yaw. And then the return value is going to be the word direction. Just before I forget, let's go back to the flight to random location. And in this first target, we're going to get the is valid connected to a clear and invalidate timer by handle. Then the handle is going to be the return value from the flight to random location. And then the output, we're going to connect it all the way back to the event begin play into the set timer by event. And that would be everything to make the AI move to the player. So let's compile and go back to the third person map. And now let's hit play. Now, as you can see, the AI is moving randomly. And as soon as it sees us, it's going to try to catch up with us. And now if I stop moving it, let it reach. See, it attacks me, then attacks me again. And they keep following me. And that's it. Now you have a functional flying AI. Just to clarify, I did this using character blueprints because it's the simplest and most beginner friendly method. But if you're already familiar with Unreal and working with behavior trees, you can easily reverse engineer this tutorial to integrate it into your AI system. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you want more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.